Hello and welcome back to the ECG course. This is chapter 8. In this chapter, we're going to talk about atrial rhythms. Atrial rhythms. In the first chapter, we talked about sinus rhythms. We said originate from the SA node. In this chapter, we're talking about atrial rhythms, which originate from anywhere in the right or left atria, the right or left atrium, except for those rhythms that originate in the SA node. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look. Now, with sinus rhythms, we noticed we have a P wave. It's a regularly regular rhythm. It's within 60 to 100 beats per minute. You have a normal PR interval, and you have a normal QRS width. But also, a few things that make it sinus are that you should have an upright P wave in all of your limb leads, except for AVR and sometimes AVL. So if this was lead two, okay, if we were looking at lead two, let me go back. If we were looking at lead two here, and we saw these negatively deflected P waves, they're inverted, okay, we would say that this is not a sinus rhythm. It's some other ectopic foci since there is a P wave, we know it's coming from the atrium, so it is an atrial rhythm. Sometimes we call it an ectopic atrial rhythm. Okay? It looks like it's a sinus rhythm in every way except for a negatively deflected P wave and an inappropriate lead. We'll talk about that a lot more in 12 leads when we're looking at all the leads together. Okay? Ectopic atrial tachycardia does not have to have a negatively deflected P wave. It might be negatively deflected, but it doesn't have to ha happen. You know it occurs because of these rules. Your rate is going to be between 100 and 180 beats per minute. All right. Your rhythm is regular. Your P wave is present, but it will be different with the tachycardia. Okay, so this P wave will be different from this P wave. That's how you know it's an ectopic atrial tachycardia. Because if it was a sinus tachycardia, it would have the same shape throughout. All right? The PQRS ratio is still going to be 1 to 1. You have one P wave for every QRS complex. Your PR interval is still going to be normal. Okay? And it's going to be a different PR interval with the ectopy. So the spacing, all right, let me bring in my calipers here. The spacing here for this PR interval is going to be different than over here. The tachycardia is going to have a different PR interval. That's how you know it's an ectopic atrial foci. And all that means is that somewhere else in the atria, in either the right atrium or the left atrium, is causing depolarization to take over in a different area of the heart. Your QRS width is still going to stay narrow. It's going to be less than 120 milliseconds, which is three small boxes. So topic atrial tachycardia. All right. The next arrhythmia we're going to talk about is wandering atrial pacemaker and multifocal atrial tachycardia. So these are both this, sort of the same concept. What happens is you'll have all of these different atrial foci. For instance, you'll have... The atrium will depolarize from over here, all right, and cause ventricular depolarization to occur. And then the next beat, it might occur over here and then cause ventricular depolarization to occur. And then over here and cause ventricular depolarization to occur. So it's, again, it's not a sinus rhythm because it's a different part within the atria that's causing the depolarization. All right, so here's a better example of what I was trying to explain, you'll see that the first QRS complex is coming from uh, atrial focus in the right atrium there. It's, it's still in the right atrium here, but it's a little further down. And then over here, it's you know close to the atrial septum. And then over here, it's in the left atrium. All right, it doesn't always occur in that pattern, but you'll notice that your P waves will change with every change of those different foci. So wandering atrial pacemaker, here are your rules. 
It's less than 100 beats per minute. That's an important rule. It'll be less than 100 beats per minute. The rhythm is going to be irregularly irregular. You'll notice that this rhythm is going to change. It's not going to stay consistent like it does with a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, if we map those out, it does not stay consistent. Your P wave, you should have at least three different morphologies. And all that means is you have to have three different shapes of P waves. If you look at these P waves down here, you'll see that they do not look alike at all. Okay, they constantly are changing shape. All right, that has to be true with a wandering atrial pacemaker. Your PQRS ratio is still going to remain one to one. There's no extra P waves with these arrhythmias. Your PR interval is going to be variable. It's going to change. One PR interval might be, you know, uh, let's say 140 milliseconds. The next might be 150 milliseconds and so on and so forth. And your QRS width should stay normal. It should be narrow, less than three small boxes of 0.12 seconds. Multifocal atrial tachycardia is exactly the same as wandering atrial pacemaker, except the rate is greater than 100. That's the only difference. So that's why with WAP, wandering atrial pacemaker, it's so important to remember that your rate must be less than 100 beats per minute. With MAT, multifocal atrial tachycardia, your rate must be greater than 100 beats per minute. And then it has all the other rules the same. It's irregularly irregular. Okay. If we measure these R to R intervals, you'll see that it's irregular. The P wave must be at least three different morphologies. Your peak to QRS ratio should be one to one. Your PR interval will vary. And your QRS width should be narrow. So those are two uh, arrhythmias that are very similar to each other. Here's an example of uh, multifocal atrial tachycardia because this one's obviously faster than 100 beats per minute. You'll notice the P waves are rapidly changing. You have at least three different P wave morphologies. You don't have any extra P waves. Your PR intervals are changing on, on this uh, EKG and your QRS complexes are narrow. All right, so this would be considered a multifocal atrial tachycardia. This one's MAT because it's faster than 100 beats per minute. And again, it's very irregular. If we measure that out, it's very irregular. Okay. It's very irregular. Your P waves, if you look at those things, they're all different shapes, and your PR interval is constantly changing. This is a multifocal atrial tachycardia. Here's another example of multifocal atrial tachycardia. And remember, WAP. Wandering atrial pacemaker looks exactly the same. It's just slower than 100 beats per minute. All right. Now you might be saying, well, I don't see P waves over here. I don't see any P waves. Okay. Now right there, you're right. You can't see the P waves. And the reason you can't see it is because the rhythm is too fast. But it's very unlikely, okay, since all the QRS complexes are the same, that it's really changing anything other than the uh, atrial focus. All right, you, you do have a P wave here. All right, it's in that T wave. We talked about that before. The same thing happens here. It's in that T wave. That's that extra bump. It happens over here too. That little bump is the P wave. And the fact that this is so irregular kind of indicates that this is possibly a multifocal atrial tachycardia. All right, moving right along to atrial flutter. Now, atrial flutter is a, a much different... Uh, type of tachycardia. This is considered reentry tachycardia. And what happens is somewhere in the atria, all right, a lot of times it happens like this, okay, you'll have depolarization, and then that depolarization will stay in this reentry. And it usually occurs about 250 to 300 times per minute. That's pretty dang fast. So those atria, atria are depolarizing really fast. They're depolarizing about 250 to 300 times per minute, way too fast to sustain life. Now, every so often, the ventricles will take that depolarization and continue it down into the ventricles, hopefully not 300 times per minute, because that is way too fast to live. All right, so here are the rules. Again, the atria are depolarizing really fast. This is 250 to 350 times per minute. The ventricles 
125 to 175 times per minute, but potentially they could be depolarizing faster than that. The rhythm is usually regular. The P waves are sawtooth F waves. I'll explain that in a second. We call them flutter waves or F waves. Your P to QRS ratio will vary, not usually on the EKG rhythm itself, but it depends on which EKG you're looking at. For example, this one we would call right here a two to one atrial flutter. What that means is we have two flutter waves, okay, for every QRS complex. So we call this a two to one atrial flutter. Now this line here, this B line down here, is showing us this rhythm without the QRS complexes. So the bottom rhythm is just the top one without the QRS complexes, just to show you that sawtooth F wave pattern. All right, that sawtooth pattern is easy to see sometimes when you cover up those QRS complexes, you can see that sawtooth pattern and identify atrial flutter. I promise you that this quick little lesson is not gonna give atrial flutter the justice it's due. When we start looking at a bunch of 12 lead examples, you're gonna see why. The PR interval is variable, and the QRS width is less than 120 milliseconds usually. Now, with atrial flutter, the ventricular rate, the heart rate, is going to depend on that ratio we talked about. Now, whatever your atria are depolarizing at, for instance, if these atria are depolarizing at 300 times per minute down here, which is very common, since this is a two to one flutter, it would, the heart rate would be exactly half of that atrial rate. Okay, so if the atria are depolarizing at 300 times per minute, th then the heart rate for a two to one flutter would be 150 times per minute, 150 beats per minute. So that's very common. So I'm just qu quickly showing you this atrial flutter rhythm, but we're gonna have to revisit it because it's such a difficult one for a lot of people to identify. And here's why. A lot of times people, especially with these two to one flutters, they'll see this first one here as a T wave, and then this one as a P wave, and they'll think it's a sinus tachycardia. That's very common to think that, but it is an atrial flutter, and the way that you identify it is by looking at many, many examples and noticing that you have to cover up those QRS complexes sometimes and see that sawtooth pattern. Here's a good example of atrial flutter. Now this one is a little bit slower as far as the ventricular rate. Okay, in the PQRS ratio, we have one, two, three. This is considered a four to one atrial flutter. You have four flutter waves for every QRS complex. And again, if you cover up those QRS complexes, sometimes it makes it easier to see that sawtooth pattern. Another important concept to remember is that the flutter waves will go right into and continue through the QRS complex and the T wave. Okay, so they don't care about, you know, what's happening in the ventricles. They'll just keep occurring. And P waves, generally, if the P wave is causing the QRS complex, you won't see it go into the QRS complex with a sinus rhythm or something like that. Here's another example of atrial flutter. And again, it's important to look at many examples of these because they're hard to identify. All right, and you'll see that this one has what we call a variable ventricular response. And what that means is that you have a, a one, two, three to one atrial flutter here. And then right here, okay, you have maybe a two to one. All right, so you have a varying ventricular response, a variable ventricular response. This is the same rhythm across the bottom in a different lead. Okay, notice how different it looks. I wouldn't monitor in this lead because the ventricular activity is so small. I would monitor in this lead up here because you have nice big QRS complexes. That's an important concept to remember when you have a patient on the monitor. Don't choose the lead with the smallest QRS complexes and the most artifact change your lead until you have one that kind of shows you the best example of the rhythm. A lot of people forget to do that. Here's another example of, of atrial flutter, and a lot of people might miss this one, thinking that, you know, we have our T wave here and our P wave here, 
But if you continue this one right there, you can see if we draw them in that this is an atrial flutter. All right, this in fact is a three to one atrial flutter. Those typically occur around 100 beats per minute when you look at the heart rate. Here's another example of atrial flutter. And again, you would have to continue that F wave that's hidden in there. That's what makes these so hard to identify is these F waves will just become hidden. All right, sometimes you have to look at them upside down. If I flipped this, you could see this sawtooth pattern a little bit easier, all right, than covering up the QRS complexes sometimes. So that's another example. All right, our next atrial arrhythmia is atrial fibrillation. Now this is a common occurrence in cardiac patients, especially, you know, the elderly. Uh, any elderly patient that tells you they have an irregular heart rhythm, it's possible that they have atrial fibrillation. Check and see if they're on blood thinners. Check and see if they're on negative chronotropes, if they're on drugs that slow down the heart. Those are common medications for atrial fibrillation. All right, atrial fibrillation is caused by a fibrillating or fibrillating atria. Uh, basically, they're quivering. All right, the atria are quivering. They're not really depolarizing fully the way they should. They're depolarizing close to 800 times per minute, which is not sustainable with life if you depolarize the ventricles that often. All right. In fact, we call that ventricular fibrillation, which we're going to learn about later. So the atria are quivering. So there, it doesn't ha typically have you know pacemakers that are just randomly occurring. In fact, if if you think about it that way, it might help. But really, it's just the entire atria are just constantly quivering, sending signals down to the ventricles almost 800 times per minute, and hopefully the ventricles are only picking up some of those. And this is what it looks like. You, you sometimes will have what we call a fibrillatory wave, all right, instead of P waves, or sometimes it's completely flat. You don't always see a fibrillatory wave, all right, but you notice how it looks like artifact. But the big giveaway here is that you can't really truly identify any P waves. There are no P waves with atrial fibrillation. The rate is going to be variable, okay? It's going to depend on the ventricles and how the ventricles respond to that chaotic atrial rhythm, all right? There is no true rhythm, all right? It does not maintain a normal rhythm at all. It is irregularly irregular, all right? It is the most common irregularly irregular rhythm you will see. So again, there's no P waves. You have chaotic atrial activity, if any that you can see on an EKG. There's no P wave, so there's no PQRS ratio. There's no P wave, so there's no PR interval. And your QRS width should uh, stay narrow, less than three small boxes. Okay, since AFib is such a common arrhythmia, I'm gonna show many examples of this. Taking a look here, you cannot identify any, there's no clearly identified P waves. It's an irregularly irregular rhythm with narrow QRS complexes, it's AFib. Say no more. Here's another one. Let's take a look at the rate of this one. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 100 beats per minute. Controlled AFib will typically be close to 100 beats per minute. Rapid AFib will exceed 100, and it becomes in need of treatment depending on the patient's condition. Okay. Again, we have here a fibrillatory wave. We don't have any clearly identified P waves and the rhythm is irregularly irregular. You don't even have to get out the calipers for this one. It's obviously irregular. Taking a look at another one. You see the top rhythm here. It doesn't have any obvious artifact looking wave. It doesn't have a, a, a fibrillatory wave. In the bottom one, you can see in, in a different lead that it does have a fibrillatory wave. It's an irregularly irregular rhythm. It's narrow. It's AFib. Again, very, very common arrhythmia, especially amongst the elderly. Here's AFib again. This one's a little bit slower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's very controlled. Okay. We don't have any ident clearly identified P waves. It's irregularly irregular and it's narrow. We've got to call it AFib. That is it for this lesson. 
I tried to make it a little bit quicker than the last one. We still reached about 20 minutes. Okay, if you want to go back and look over sinus rhythms again, click on the left uh, image and it'll take you back to chapter 7 on sinus rhythms. If you're uh, ready to move on to the next chapter, chapter 9, we're going to start talking about junctional rhythms. Okay, and if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button on the bottom and uh, make sure you're getting all of these videos.